Thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. Um, today we are joined by Lindsay with Stroudwater. She will be presenting, this is really our kickoff um, swing bed webinar for this grant year. And so we have, she has a lot of really great information, but this is also kind of a planning period too for us um, where we'll be kind of lining out our um, swing bed activities for the year and in terms of education and webinars that folks want to hear. And so we do have a smallish group today. So if you have questions, um, again, you have the ability, you can come off mute. Um, if you would rather put something in the chat or if you don't have a microphone, totally fine. Um, I'll be watching the chat. So with that said, Lindsay, I will turn it over to you. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Lindsay Corcoran. I'm a senior consultant at Stroudwater. And we are gonna walk through um, this um, project that is made possible by the Oklahoma Flex program. And it is really, it's called the swing bed care spectrum. And so I'll walk through a little bit more about this. Um, but really, since this is the, uh, the new year, a new kickoff, um, we wanted to, you may have seen some of these slides. We had this project um, over the last two years, but we've had kind of spits and bursts in terms of participation. And our goal is to get everyone participating uh, in, in this um, swing bed care spectrum work. Um, it previously was called maybe the swing bed directory, um, but really we've kind of changed the name so it resonates to really what the goal is um, of this work. And so um, we'll start off by doing some uh, little level setting and talk about you know why, why are we focusing on swing beds? Um, a little bit about the program overview. Uh, I'm joined also on the call by Paula Knowlton from Stroudwater. She'll give us a brief kind of live demo of the, the kind of the analytics side of, of this program. And then we'll talk a little bit about next steps and answer any questions that you have. Um, in addition, as Laura mentioned, we'll have a polling question to really kind of plan out some of the education components that go along with this um, program for this year. Uh, so, so really, you know, why the focus on swing beds? Well, we know that, you know, swing beds for our rural hospitals and rural communities are a, an important care resource for our patients. Um, they also help kind of address any capacity issues and create an additional kind of, um, uh, uh, create additional volume growth for organizations outside of, you know, your typical um, inpatient utilization. So, um, it, you know, Another, you know, in rural communities, we're, we're having the, the conversations around access. You know, swing beds certainly provide another kind of point of access outside of um, skilled nursing facilities. You know, you're receiving that skilled care. You're receiving that care close to home, um, somewhere within your remaining within your community and get, instead of getting transferred outside of your community for that skilled level of care. And close to families, you know, uh, we know that, you know, the heal, uh, you know, people tend to heal quicker um, and have kind of a better mental state if they are close to family and have that, those connections. Uh, the quality of our swing bed programs, uh, you know, studies have shown there's reduced re readmissions and avoidable ED visits um, due to, to patients going through uh, the a swing bed program, um, as well as shorter lengths of stay uh, compared to skilled nursing facilities. So not only do we get those patients um, back home and, um, you know, you know, checking off some of their acti activities of daily living, but they're also not in the hospital as long. Uh, so that is a, is a great benefit to the swing bed program. And from, you know, the, the final kind of prong in this three prong approach is the financial aspect. Um, certainly helps with the critical access hospital length of stay requirement, in addition to providing, again, additional revenue streams um, for, for hospitals, um, especially critical access hospitals. But why are we talking about it? Um, and is really around swing bed utilization is so varied across the country. Um, you know, when we look at um, hospitals and their kind of their average daily census or their census related to their swing bed program, there is significant opportunity to grow. And so, you know, obviously there may be some in different markets, there's lots of maybe competition, there's other hospitals, there's other skilled nursing facilities, there's folks that are battling with insurance. Uh, you know, I there's not 
a conversation that I don't have with organizations that are saying that, you know, Medicare Advantage plans or your Medicare HMOs are the biggest gatekeepers in terms of the growth of our swing band program. Um, and so I'm sure some of you are saying, yes, yes, I don't know what to do about it. Um, you know, I, it, there's, that's happening in a lot of different markets, um, unfortunately. But, you know, the long story short is that there is certainly significant opportunity to in, in continue to grow and expand and capture additional kind of census related to our um, swing bed program. Um, one area that we're going to, we mentioned, and it's really the title of this program this year is around a care spectrum. And so leveraging kind of the, the analytics tool that we have built, um, you know, organizations are going to go through kind of evaluating what they currently have. And we're going to translate that to your swing bed program and understanding, you know, um, of the spectrum of care, you know, what are the services that we currently provide? Um, is there opportunity to expand service delivery? And, um, you know, what are, what, what do we have for resources um, to continue to support services and potentially expand services? And so that's how, you know, kind of the exercise of de defining what your care spectrum is and looking for opportunities to expand it. Um, is is a common goal within this this program here. So more specifically about the program, um, this care, this swing bed care spectrum is starts off kind of with a, a gap analysis, and that gap analysis is part of the analytics tool um, that you all have. And the goals of of walking through and doing this kind of internal analysis is really to um, I kind of educate staff and on the full potential of swing beds. So comparing yourself to that full potential that is embedded into that, that analytics tool um, within our swing bed portal that Paula will walk through. And then there's, uh, you know, uh, how do we leverage um, that information that comes out of that gap analysis to identify opportunities? Um, opportunities to look at different services, um, to expand our swing bed program, uh, capture additional census and volume. Um, and then, you know, a key aspect to this also is learning from a cohort of peer hospitals. Um, and we are, um, have, a, you know, kind of a, a, a whole list of different education topics. Um, and you'll all get to get you're going to be pulled on those education topics at the end of this presentation. And that'll help kind of hone in on where the group wants to go from an education um, perspective related to swing bed. But it also opens, you know, we want to, to hear from you all. What are you all experiencing? What's working well? What's not, or not working well? What are some best practices that you could bring to the group um, and share? Because we run, you know, we find that sharing and learning from each other is, is a, you know certainly a, a best practice um, for just kind of overall improvement. And um, you know what better way than getting everybody around the table and talking about swing beds. Um, in addition to um, uh, kind of the learning aspect, the gap analysis, there is a kind of a, a nod to marketing because if we're going to talk about you know our internal swing bed programs and what those look like, we want to understand how we can use that information to grow our swing bed. And that's kind of around the marketing and promotion. And so we'll, we, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, within this year's program. Um, so as I mentioned, there is a, a gap analysis that occurs. And that's something that you will create a user account within uh, the Stroudwater Analytics uh, swing bed portal. Um, you'll log on, you only have to log in once um, to make kind of your selections and go through that gap analysis um, within the data database, kind of looking at your hospital swing bed program and comparing it to kind of the, the, the matrix that is within this portal. Um, and, uh, and again, I mentioned that you only have to enter that once. Um, and then, you know, what's going to come out of it is a, a priority um, or an opportunity matrix. And I'll share a little bit about what that kind of looks like. Um, and this is where we're gonna have some conversations about is, okay, well, I, 
I have all this information. Now what, you know, what is this information telling me? Well, it's, it's certainly going to tell you about kind of maybe where there's some gaps within your swing bed program and where there's that, that opportunity and to start to have the conversation about um, developing that spectrum of care for your swing bed program. Um, and so we certainly want to um, continue that conversation as it relates to the, the swing bed care spectrum, because that will help elevate your program, have everyone kind of on the same page about, okay, this is what our swing bed program looks like at X hospital and use that information to market and promote. Um, and, and so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about, about that. Um, when you do the gap analysis, this self-assessment, there's going to be a whole slew of different clinical programs, um, you know, ranging from pneumonia management or orthopedics or long-term IV management, um, you know, nutritional support, those type of things. So each clinical program will be reviewed. And within each program, clinical program, there's a list of kind of resource requirements for each. So such as care and nursing competencies or um, which may include, you know, whether or not you have a certified wound care nurse, or you may have, there's um, looking at the different equipment related to that clinical program, whether or not you have bariatric beds or ventilators to support your clinical program, um, and then support services. Do you have, you know, discharge planning? Is that happening? Um, for your swing bed patients? What type of access to specialty providers do you have? What's your rehab complement? Do you offer uh, PT and OT or do you have the full complement of PT, OT and speech? Um, so again, it, that's part of that, that self-assessment. Um, what we always like to say um, to folks is that that, that self-assessment, that gap analysis should really be done with an interdisciplinary team. You know, um, I would uh, highly suggest, you know, you you're, get some key members, key members of your um, interdisciplinary team. This here is just a list of some, some folks that we may suggest and gather around the computer and answer the yes or no questions um, that are within the, the gap analysis self-assessment. Um, and, you know, here's just a kind of a brief snapshot from looking at the different um, resource categories and what those necessary resource requirements may be. And it's, it's, it's literally just going through each one of these and saying yes or no. Um, you do have that service or you do have that competency, yes or no. Um, and then same with looking at, you know, what are some of the equipment that you may have, the, the space, in which you provide some of those services, again, it's a yes or no a question. Um, part of the output um, is, as I mentioned before, an opportunity matrix. And so for each one of the clinical resources or pr clinical programs that you currently um, have or that are listed within your swing bed program, it'll give you whether it, uh, it's, it indicates whether you have a match, an opportunity, a conflict, or non-applicable. Um, and so things that kind of fall into that match bucket are, yes, the hospital has indicated that they currently provide that clinical program, i.e. maybe uh, cardiac, for instance. And then yes, they also have the necessary resources to effectively provide cardiac um, services. And then, you know, moving on to conflict, Yes, the hospital has indicated that they do provide cardiac services within their rehab, their swing bed program, but no, they don't have all the necessary resources. So that kind of pops up as a conflict. And then um, the other category that we really want to focus is on those opportunities. You do have all the necessary resources to provide, you know, that um, clinical program within your swing bed program, but you've also indicated, no, you don't provide that clinical program. Um, so that is kind of where we want to see um, it kind of that's the, the sweet spot is those opportunities um, because you have everything, all the necessary resources to kind of uphold and, and put forth that clinical program. So that could be a uh, an opportunity there. 
Um, and so this here is just kind of a snapshot about what this looks like. So for, for instance, this particular hospital um, has a conflict around the management of newly diagnosed specific conditions. That is a, considered a conflict because yes, they say they have that clinical program, but they have not indicated, yes, they have all the kind of the, the best practice uh, resources related to that clinical program. Um, and so what, you know, and this helps us ask the questions, have further conversations with our swing bed team about our swing bed program. Um, is there, you know, one of the big findings that we've had is some kind of around some program specific uh, things like, for instance, um, the, the re response for a acceptance versus a non-acceptance of a referral for our swing bed program is, um, takes less than an hour to respond. So hospitals will indicate yes or no. Um, for one cohort of hospitals that we're working with, that was a, 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 a significant finding where a lot of the hospitals were indicating, no, it takes far longer to respond to a referral source, whether they're going to accept or not accept that swing bed referral. And so the conversation that we have with that cohort is, is trying to understand what are some of the barriers. Why is it taking you know, more than 24 hours, or, you know, in some cases, you know, that more than 24 hours. Well, it, you know, if that is continuously happening, a lot of times that referring source isn't going to, you know, send, send that many referrals back to that hospital for swing bed services, because, you know, their whole, whole goal is to get the patient out and get the patient into the next kind of care setting. And if we are taking a whole day to get that response, you know, something, something has to change. There has to be an improvement opportunity. So it's, again, it's an opportunity to really self-assess, understand um, from an operational and a clinical programming perspective, what we can do to improve our swing bed program. Um, also, one of the kind of the outputs within that online portal is around a marketing flyer. This is a, a tool for you all to utilize, leveraging some of the information that is within that um, self-assessment, in addition to some areas that are program specific that you can add um, to this marketing flyer or promotional flyer to be able to send to your referral sources. So this is really a snapshot about who we are um, as a hospital in our swing bed program. Um, and we can put things in like, this is the average length of stay of our swing bed patients. This is the our return to home rate um, for our patients. Uh, again, it's the getting this information in front of our referral sources will help them better understand the types of patients that we currently serve um, within our swing bed program. Because how often is is this information continuously communicated with um, case managers or discharge planners at your referring hospitals? You know, with staffing challenges today in the constant kind of turnover and um, staffing changes that are happening in organizations, the person that you talked to, you know, three months ago at your referring hospital may not be the same person. Um, and so always having kind of the snapshot about your uh, swing bed program is certainly vital for your organization to continue to kind of have those referrals coming in. So um, this is a tool that would, would help you um, do that. Um, I did want to um, kind of share a little story about a hospital in rural Georgia um, who really found, you know, uh, really developed kind of a niche service um, and kind of in, in through that journey and getting to that um, niche service was understanding what they can and couldn't do within their swing bed program. What were the clinical programs that they were currently offering? What necessary resources did they currently have internally? And what was that opportunity? Um, and that opportunity actually ended up being a ventilator and trait program. Um, and, uh, you know, by creating this niche service within their swing bed program, they were able to really um, really increase their swing bed census 
and they've continued to grow their swing bed program. Um, they are getting referrals, you know, all across the state for um, uh, their their kind of their niche program. So again, it's it's going through the exercise, and maybe there is the opportunity to um, uh, develop or even promote more so than we already are today around a niche service related to your swing bed program. Some folks, you know, kind of stand up a, a wound care kind of swing bed program or service offering that, you know, maybe in their market, there's not a lot of hospitals that have the necessary resources to be able to support wound care within their swing bed program. And, you know, maybe your hospital could. Um, so again, it's kind of looking for those, those, and I use that word again, is those opportunities. Um, all right, I'm going to pause. If, if certainly if there's any questions, um, the feel free to put in the chat or take yourself off of mute. Um, Paula, are you, are you on? I am. Oh, look at you. Okay. Thanks, Paula. Yep. Just going to get that out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Paula Knowlton. I'm uh, the Senior Client Services Manager at Stroudwater. Um, I take care of our web products. Um, so I'm going to walk you through our Swing Bed Gap Analysis tool, as Lindsay said. I may repeat some of the things that Lindsay have already, has already said as well. Um, so forgive me if um, that happens. Um, so this is the swing bed um, gap analysis program. This is just our demonstration account. So you're going to see it completed. Um, a few of you have access to this particular tool. That's your opportunity now. If you have any changes, have added competencies for your nursing staff, you can go in and change your no's to yeses and update your opportunity matrix and also update your profile for that marketing um, flyer and make more use of that if you haven't already. Um, so there's three areas that you will complete. There's resources and clinical programs, and that will produce the opportunity matrix. And then the profile is going to produce the marketing flyer. So we'll start with the resources. And this is really a very simple tool to use. You're gonna go in under certain areas. This one happens to be wound care, the first one that comes up. And you're gonna answer the question, does your hospital have the following resources or clinical competencies available for each of the questions? And these are just applicable to wound care. So you'll go down through and you'll just click on yes or no. Was, when you log in the very first time, these will not be highlighted at all. So you will just click on those to do that. There are also question marks here that you can mouse over to give you a little more information about what it is that we're asking for and defining that information for you. So there's wound care and you can see the questions there. And then you would, once you've completed those and every area or question has to have a response. If you, if you skip one, then your opportunity matrix will not populate. So you'll have to answer everything. Uh, orthopedics, cardiopulmonary, Nutrition, dialysis, education, providers, rehabilitation, care transitions, and then infrastructure, which is equipment and areas that you would have um, for rehab. Once you've completed this portion in those 10 areas, you'll just go back to that first page. And the next one is clinical programs. And you're just answering, does your hospital offer the following swing bed clinical services? Again, it's just yes or no. There are 18 of them listed there. So you can see cardiac, long-term IV management, orthopedic, post-stroke, and so on. And once you've completed this, then you can produce the opportunity matrix. So we take those resources and the clinical programs that you're offering, and we um, combine them into the opportunity matrix. And it's looking at, do you have all of the necessary resources to provide the services? So again, if it's a match, 
<clears throat> and Lindsay went through this, if it's a match, you have all of the resources and you're providing the service. So for me, for a match, for example, is post-acute kidney disease management. If I click on that, it's going to take me into that. And you're probably wondering, okay, what exactly are all of the uh, necessary resources and competencies for post-acute kidney disease? That's where we've put these together. So you're gonna get the competencies, um, the, the providers or the support systems, and the equipment that's necessary, the follow-up information, it's all listed um, in these. So that one happens to be a match. I've said yes to all of those. So there's my match. If I go back to my opportunity matrix, or I can just go through each of these down here at the bottom. So this one's a conflict. This is pulmonary. <clears throat> so conflict means that I am providing the service, but I don't have all the necessary resources. So anyway, there's a no, there's a resource that's missing, whether it's a competency or a piece of equipment or having you know, a pharmacist involvement, whatever it may be, um, it's going to tell me um, what that is so that I can either provide, you know, come up and provide those competencies for the nursing, or it may be that I need to acquire some equipment, whether it's leasing it or buying it to make this, um, make it that I have all of the necessary um, resources to provide this with the best practices. So that's the opportunity matrix. And again, you can come back here and you can see where those are. An opportunity is I have all of the resources. So long-term IV management, I have all of the resources, everything is a yes, but I'm not providing that service. So this would be an opportunity to, to, make, to see if this, is this a service that would benefit our community? Is it a need for our community? Um, and if it is, then it would be something that you would consider adding um, as a swing bed service. <clears throat> so that's the opportunity matrix. The other side of this is the marketing piece and that's the marketing flyer. So completing um, information around um, your swing bed profile. If you have a branded name for your swing bed program, that's great and use that. If you don't, it's just your hospital's name. And then the summary of the swing bed program, what do you want your community to know about your program? Whether it's your length of stay, whether it's, um, you know, in this case, this one is, you know, you're, where you're a name and not a number. Uh, recently selected as a top 20 critical access hospital. So what do you want your community to know about your swing bed program? And then the counties you serve. So this is just an open text box that you can enter that information. Contact information for those referral providers. Referrals being accepted weekdays, weekends, um, and removing that slider for the start and end times. Pre-approved admissions for weekdays and weekends. If you do that, it's either a yes or no. Your medical oversight by a hospitalist and or primary care physicians. Clinical approval, how long does it take for clinical approval? One hour, four hours, same day, 48 hours. And then the payer classes that you accept. Specialists that you have available for your swing bed patients. These do not have to be employed specialists. They can just be, you know, they are there for consults. They are available to your patients. That's what we're looking for. Uh, these are services that you have available. So yes or no on these services. A little more detailed than what we have on the other side. And then the rehab services that you have available. And then you'll get go to your flyer. And you can download this marketing flyer. Now I've said yes to everything. So this is a very full uh, marketing flyer, yours will be you know, applicable to what you tell us. Um, it's only gonna produce what you've said yes to. Uh, so you can see the information here. There's the contact information, the service area, your referral process, the specialists that you have available, the swing bed services, and then the rehab programs. Um, some ways that this program, this flyer has been used by the critical access hospitals that are utilizing this program, um, sending it, downloading it, and sending it to your re referral providers. 
so that they have it available for those patients that are deciding where they want to go for a post acute care. Um, some facilities have this printed off and in in certain places within their hospital um, so that patients can take it with them. You're educating your community on what it is that you provide for services. It also has been part of discharge package, especially in the ED, um, so that you're you know, giving the, that option to those patients that may be looking for those services, whether it's part of that ED visit or outside of it, um, they know what you are able to provide. So I am now gonna stop sharing and give it back to Lindsay. Or oh, do you want me to just bring up the, I can just bring up the slide deck if that works. Yeah, that works great. Um, Paula, I had a quick question just sure. to address. Um, so when folks enter their data and information into here, it's not shared with anyone. It's really for their use together um, to do their opportunity matrix. It's not um, compiled or shared, correct? That is correct. And, and Laura, to kind of take that a step further, we would like to share the information. We can do it on a blinded basis, but to, to look at kind of where, you know, as a group collectively, uh, where there may be some uh, gaps in swing bed service delivery, um, where there may be some opportunities and, and talk about it as, as a group. And it may be um, where we share some best practices, potentially, you know, if uh, back to my example, where we were talking about the referral response rate, you know, if a hospital is really struggling with getting a re uh, response um, back to the referring hospitals, you know, maybe that's an opportunity to share with folks about what's working for the hospitals that can get it done in within an hour. Um, and so, again, that's going back to that shared learning within this group of hospitals. Um, so we would, you know, and then the only way to kind of leverage that is to look at the data, to look at, and we can pull that information out. We can look at it on a blinded basis um, as well. Okay, thank you. I just didn't want anyone to be apprehensive about entering their information. Yep, yep. And anything that we put um, out to the group, we can we can certainly blind that. Uh, just looking for some common themes or trends, and and maybe use that to as a to spearhead some additional education topics uh, built okay. into the ones that we may vote on. Okay, good. Uh, um, also, for folks on the call, just to uh, and we'll reiterate this at the end. But if you're thinking. I haven't done this or who in my facility has access to this, please reach out to us and we'll see kind of where you are with that process. Um, Paula, would you mind discussing like everyone does have to sign a master service agreement? Yeah. Another process for getting signed up. Yeah, we have the next steps. The, the just kidding, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so the, to answer Laura's question around who has entered uh, data, who has, at least made it 50% of the way and got the necessary forms that we need uh, from you all to enter the data and get access to the portal to enter the data. Um, this is where you all are. Uh, so if you are a, a green hospital here on this list of the, all of the critical access hospitals um, in Oklahoma, uh, you um, have entered data and you've completed all the necessary paperwork. There may be an opportunity that maybe, you know, within the last year or the last six months, we've changed some things. We've we've hired some folks with a different set of skill sets, and we might want to update. Um, so you still have the ability to update and change any information that is entered in there. That is something that, you know, feel free to go in and, and turn things on or off uh, within that, that portal. Um, folks that are highlighted in the blue color, um, you have um, all the paperwork in place, um, but you still need to go in and enter the data. So if you need information about how to log into the system, uh, Paula would be your, your best contact to reach out uh, to get that next step completed because we want to get some more folks turned green. And then Folks that are not are indicated as red, you have not signed up, you have not completed the paperwork and you have not entered any data. So we wanna get you moving along and get you um, to the next step. So 
Paula, do you want to um, share kind of the necessary information that we need from hospitals to continue on? Yeah, I can do that. Um, so this is the end user form, and Laura, I'll get this to you um, so that you can get it out to all of the hospitals. Uh, if you are not participating, you're one of the red hospitals and you want to participate, this form starts that process by completing this information and just sending it to me. My email address is at the top of the form. It's also in this slide deck. If you send it to me, then we can get started. And this is just giving me information so that I can fill out the form for the next step, which is the master subscription agreement. And also down here at the bottom, you're listing your end users. Um, you can have as many users as you want for this program. Um, I do not give anyone access to your account unless they are listed on this form. Um, and you're welcome to change the form and resend it to me. Um, you're not, you know, you're not held to only those people that you put on there the first time around, obviously. Also, if you are a hospital that has been participating, if, but you're new to your position and you're going, I have no idea what this is about. I don't know who has access to it. Reach out to me. I'm happy to have that conversation with you to let you know who has that access. It may be the person who has access isn't even an employee and you're, you know, they've left um, because of turnover um, or retirement or whatever it's been. Um, so let's get that information updated as well. The master subscription agreement is a legal agreement between Stroudwater and the Critical Access Hospital for access into um, the web portal. Uh, we do, this particular program doesn't deal with PHI, but you know some of our programs do. So we have to have this agreement in place in order for you to have access into the web portal. Um, and this is just um, the portal registration, which I, you know, before you have access, you're going to go through a training webinar with me where I'm going to actually show you how to register for the website. This happens to be what we would look at. The address is stroudwateranalytics.com. You click on sign up. You give a, you know, you give us the information. You choose your own passwords. Um, and then we go through a process on the back end to confirm your email address. And then I grant you access into the website. Uh, important that you have your IT folks whitelist stroudwater.com and stroudwateranalytics.com so that you're receiving our emails not only from us individually, individually but also from our portal. <clears throat> Thanks. Thanks, Paula. The other thing I just want to make a note of, and maybe your hospital ha has is... Um, indicated kind of your green that you've submitted all the data, but you're new to your organization or new to your role. And this is the first time you're hearing this information. Uh, reach out to Paula uh, because then we can get you the information so you can go in and you might have to, we might have to sign you up on that end user form. So you have access to, to your hospital's data that has been previously submitted. Um, so you can kind of see what the tool is and what it looks like. Um, and again, that's it's open to anybody uh, as long as we have the necessary information. Because I know that you know certainly folks have maybe moved around in their organizations, and this is the first time seeing this. Uh, so we just want to make sure that we're we're included and in bringing you up to speed um, with this program. So with that, um, we're gonna Laura's gonna post. Um, oh, and here's our contact information again uh, to reach out around this program. Uh, Laura is going to put up uh, some polling questions as it relates to webinar topics. Uh, this we're going to do four webinars this year. Um, uh, so look for certainly look for some calendar updates. But really, we want you all to um, select from this list here of kind of high priority webinar ed swing bed education webinars. Uh, so feel free to kind of read through those and and select kind of which ones um, are high value for you um, and that you'd like to see in it. We have uh, three remaining webinars, sorry, I said four. And, and this is great. And I think um, having you all share kind of what is top of mind makes this year's program more valuable to your organizations. Cause that's really what, what we wanna do because you know we're not, 
um, in your organizations on a daily basis and don't have the luxury of understanding kind of where where you all need, what what are some of the needs? What are some of the needs or the desires that are going to help? You, your organization and your swing band program. And so, um, so thank you for your participation. And we're really gonna, we're really looking forward to um, this year. And maybe we have some new folks uh, there. We, and, and that will be great. If there are something that you see on this list that we may not be able to cover this year, um, just let us know. We are always available to be kind of a resource um, to help answer any questions that are kind of help you related to your swing bed program. If Paula and I don't have the answer, we have resources available to help answer those questions. So um, just please let us know if there's anything that does come up uh, that it might not be covered on these education sessions. And um, as always, come with questions. And we will, because, you know, if one person has a question, there's probably others that also have that same question. So don't be, um, don't be scared to, to ask the question. That's for sure. We want this to be a kind of an, a, a learning opportunity for all. And I think that's it. So, uh, Laura, do you have dates that are scheduled already? Um, yes, I I believe we had okay. someone come off mute just now. So are, are there any questions before we get into the dates? Yes, I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, my name is Simran and I'm actually at a hospital here uh, in Cimarron County. Um, they actually never had a social worker before, at least that nobody knows of. So I am working on getting the swing bed program kind of up and running and implemented. Mm -hmm. What resources do you have so that I can start educating not only myself, but the staff on the basics of swing bed? So we, in previous years, um, some of these webinars, especially the ones that were kind of ranked a little bit low, we've hosted before, and I will send you your, our YouTube channel. So like the Swing Bed 101, um, I believe we have hosted that webinar before, um, but some of those to get started. Also, I would suggest, um, you know, getting signed up to do uh, the uh, gap analysis, just to kind of see what competencies, like what you have, um, to offer. And Lindsay, um, Paula, I'd, what are your suggestions as well? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, leveraging some of the work that has happened over the last couple of years, um, as Laura mentioned, there are the recorded uh, presentations that are made available to all. Um, in addition to, in uh, certainly that swing bed conditions of participation webinar, maybe that's going to be a good first webinar that we do will have a lot of, okay, what can we do? What can't we do um, as it relates to, you know, foundational things related to the swing bed program. Uh, so it, if you can get in front of yourself, the Medicare conditions of participation, um, that is certainly going to be kind of a good tool uh, for you all um, as you start your swing bed program. But that's a exciting for you all. And again, let us know, um, Paul, Paula, if you want to put back up our, our contact information, if there's a specific question, uh, feel free to just shoot us an email. Um, we, we'd love to help you out. I also put our YouTube channel in the chat as well. And this webinar will be posted on that link as well. That's great. So I was transcribing, um, the preferences folks had, let me get my calendar open as I'm talking about this, um, but we do have the dates already set and they were in that initial email. I'm going to send an updated email with our topics. Um, and also, if you've already registered for those Zoom meetings, you have them on your calendar. You'll just notice that the title of the meeting will be changed from Swing Bed Webinar Number 2 to the appropriate title. But the number one preference from folks was the Swing Bed Conditions of Participation. Um, so that would be our, let me look, is that April? That would be our March 8th webinar. Um, and then the next one was best practices related to establishing swing bed therapy goals. Um, I'll get that one updated and sent out. And then the third is the swing bed patient framework, how to determine what types of patients are appropriate for your swing program. And again, I'll get all these dates. We have the dates already set, um, but I'll get all of this updated 
um, along with the meeting information updated and resent out. So you can go ahead and get all those on your calendar or if they're on your calendar, updated to what the title is. All right, are there any questions right before we hop off? Well, thank you all for your time. And again, as you move forward, if you have any questions about um, who is already registered or if my facility is registered, please let me know. Um, I can place you in touch with Paula as well. So thank you all for your time and everyone have a great day and a great um, Christmas too. Thank you.